Oh, Niels Bohr once, uh, once stated that everything uh, he says should be considered not as an affirmation, but as a question. And I think that's a very humble approach to addressing difficult problems. Would you look at a problem closely enough to realize that there's all these little questions embedded within it? And every little bit of knowledge that we have actually breaks out into further questions, and there's no end to it. Once you pursue one avenue, it just keeps going and going. My name is Milton Garces, and I hunt sounds, very deep sounds. I'm Shelly Mahendra, and I use bacteria to clean up pollution. My name is Alison Watri, and I use stem cells as a model for mental disorders. Eric Lander, my advisor, is my favorite scientist. Linus Pauling. My mom. <laughs> Feynman and, and Einstein. And um, Darwin, of course, is another favorite. My name is Jessica Transick, and I work on the science and engineering of developing new energy technologies. Uh, I'm Pardis Savetti, and I study genomics and infectious disease. I work in the field of haptics, and we leverage what we know about the human sense of touch to create really compelling interactive interfaces for humans. I make computer games that allow tens of thousands of people to help scientists solve really complex problems. And what we do is we compare uh, brain cells that were derived from autistic kids to brain cells that were derived from, from non-affected individuals, and we look for differences. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about Professor Dumbledore who said to Harry that it's our choices that define who we are, not our abilities. I recently came across one from Jonas Salk. He said, I had um, nightmares and I had dreams. I overcame the nightmares because of my dreams. What we think is silence doesn't really exist. We're actually permeated with vibration that pretty much fill our world. We're putting forth a new template for how science can be done. I let my mind wander and I love the things it brings back from its wanderings. If you talk to people and ask them what they do, it's often very simple puzzles. And so we're taking those puzzles and giving them right to the world. Um, and in some sense, maybe the future of science will be creating puzzles and then handing them to the world to solve.